Hey everyone, my name is Matt. Welcome to my backyard and welcome back to my series on building my new trailer. If this is your first time here, I will leave you a link to a playlist up in the cards and down in the description that contains all the videos that go along with the series so you can quickly and easily and conveniently navigate between all of them. So last time we worked up here on the tongue area, we got the chain tray, the winch mount, the jack, the safety rail, we got that all installed and we also installed the rear light bar on the trailer. This time we're going to take care of uh, some big stuff and maybe some small stuff. So uh, let's get started by making some, uh, some fenders. That sounds fun. <laughs> so the fenders are gonna be made from another sheet of 10 gauge. This is another uh, four by 10 sheet. So it's exactly the same thing I used to do the decking on the trailer. 10 gauge is about an eighth of an inch thick. And I've drawn up a rough kind of idea for them in the computer. And the biggest thing I did there was to figure out my clearances so there's going to be enough room inside of the fenders for the tires to move as those springs compress. So I've set things up so that there will be about 5 inches of clearance from the top of the tire when it's unloaded to the top of the fender. That way if the spring fully uh, compresses and the axle hits the bottom of the trailer somehow, there'll still be about an inch or so between the tire and that fender. On my old trailer, there's not enough clearance there. So if you hit a bump with that thing loaded, that tire is hitting that fender and uh, you're going to have some uh, rubber on the inside of that fender. <laughs> so I have five inches there and also set up to be about three inches from the outside here. That's going to be the same as the clearance between the two tires. So try and keep it uh, looking somewhat good and all that. So here's a quick look at the drawing. So this is basically the backing plate which is going to go up against the trailer and then we'll build out the walls from here. I went with a clipped corner design. I actually like this. I don't really care for the whole curved roll thing. This is also easy to fabricate and it will match the, uh, the bandsaw mill. And I guess technically it will match the fenders on my old trailer. So I like that. I know some people don't like this. I do. So this gives me some good dimensions to kind of go off of and base my uh, cuts off of. I left the numbers with fun fractions because I know it's going to drive some of you metric people absolutely crazy. There's nothing that will drive someone more crazy than showing someone who loves metric a fraction. <laughs> and there's no one easier to trigger than a metric fanboy. <laughs> Maybe next time, instead of fractions, I'll put them in decimal and see if that uh, drives anyone crazy as well. <laughs> but in this case, I know 21 30 seconds is just a third second inch more than 5 eighths. And then 5 eighths is only an eighth of an inch more than a half, and a half of an inch is a half more than zero. Fractions are fun. <laughs> so I'm gonna go through and lay out all these parts and get them all cut out of the sheet. I made myself a little cut layout guide template thing uh, as well in the computer, which should help me better utilize the stock I have here. And just kind of lay out the parts onto the sheets. The fenders are gonna be 10 and a half inches deep, which will cover the wheels and it'll put me at uh, I think 101 and a half inches wide, which is a half inch narrower than the legal limit for width.
So there are the backing plates, and then I have the wall pieces here, which can get cut to fit uh, all the way around here. I'm also going to add some tube, which is going to run around the front edge to give some support there. So like on my current trailer, it doesn't have anything supporting the front. So you can see how the fenders kind of sag and can do all kinds of stuff. So a little bit of tube will reinforce this area here and give us some more beam strength. So at this point, I can go ahead and start getting things cut to fit all those backing plates. I think I will do the tube first. I'll use the backing plates as a template to cut all those pieces of tube and get those kind of arch pieces welded together before then adding all of the sides to these things. I was also going to add a piece of tube on the inside to reinforce that connection, but uh, I think that might be a little bit uh, crazy. <laughs> so I'm going to leave it off for now and we'll just see how things look once this is all assembled. So both the fenders are all tacked together and ready to be welded out. One of the things I did, as you can see here, is I've offset the pieces a little bit, which is going to give me a little bit of a lip for where my weld's going to go. It's also going to make sure I'm really tying in nicely to both pieces so I get a nice solid connection. Before I go through and actually do the final welding, I'm going to install a little brace piece, one of these pieces of tubes here, which I go from down here where the fender's going to connect to the frame up into here and just further reinforce this area here so it does not sag. My current trailer uses a uh, little piece of plate there as a gusset. I've got this extra tube. I'm just going to use that. It should be a little bit cleaner. And I also cut a little plate to go down in here and double up this material. That will just help to reinforce and distribute any pressure from this guy coming down into the frame. That is one fender ready to uh, go on. That guy goes over here somewhere. I guess uh, I'll just do that uh, all again. <laughs> uh, yeah, repeat that again.
Yeah, good way to melt some ice, huh? <laughs> so these fenders are gonna be bolt on and they're a little bit heavy and awkward. So to make it a lot easier to put them on, I made these little stands here, which just give me a place to rest the fender. As I get it clamped in place, I can drill all the holes. And if I ever want to remove them and put them back on again, it just makes uh, reinstalling them a little bit easier because I'm holding all the weight of the fender while you're trying to get it aligned. So I just welded these out of some scrap pieces just to make a little bracket. And those will get welded to the side of the frame so the fender ends up uh, roughly in line with where the radius of the bottom of the tube uh, starts. Now while I'm getting these fenders installed, let me tell you a little bit about this video's sponsor, Refrigerware. If you've been following along with the videos, you've heard me talk about Refrigerware in the past and you've seen me wearing their clothing during the entirety of the build. Now I've pretty much taken this build through the entire winter season here in Minnesota and I have to say that Refrigerware makes some of the warmest and most comfortable cold weather gear that I've ever worn. Their extreme jacket, which you can see me wearing now, is easily my favorite winter jacket ever. It is so incredibly warm and doesn't restrict movement nearly as much as something that's super bulky. Now one change for me this winter was the addition of the skid steer with the snowblower attachment. So that meant that I was moving away from my traditional walk behind snowblower. I was a little bit worried because with the skid steer, you're just standing there pushing buttons. You're not walking, you're not moving. You don't get to generate your own heat. But I was pleasantly surprised that the refrigerator gear kept me super warm even when I wasn't actually moving, which is uh, perfect. <laughs> so definitely check out their cold weather gear. It's absolutely amazing. And if you live in places that are not nearly as cold as this here in Minnesota, they have some warmer weather, cold weather gear <laughs> for those uh, not so ridiculously cold days. So thank you again, Refrigerware, for sponsoring this video. Let's get back to the trailer build. Apparently I only have two of those uh, bolts. So I gotta pick up some more. I'll do it tomorrow, I guess, because we're running out of daylight. Uh, let's throw these tires back on here and get this thing back on the ground. All right, new day. New bolts, let's get this fender installed. So that takes care of the fenders. Uh, one thing uh, I don't really like at this point is the fact that the side of the fender is up against the frame. That's gonna allow water to get caught between there. So depending on what I do with the coating and what happens later, I may end up putting a little spacer between the frame and the fender just to allow some space there for some air so water can drain through there. The downside of that is there'll be a gap there that crap can get into. So I might put some kind of gasket or silicone along the top. I'm not really sure at this point, but that's things I can figure out in the future. Not really worried about that. Let's move on to uh, the little light boxes, which will go here, which I could further use to support these fenders, which are so flimsy. <laughs> so to make up those light boxes, I have this piece of tube, which is five by three. This is a uh, heavier thickness than I really need for this, but this was in the uh, discount clearance section of the home, not the home center, the steel yard. <laughs> uh, so it was cheaper for me to buy this heavier wall stock 
also too much length than I actually needed than to buy the right thickness and only the length that I needed. So I'll have some extra here and this will be way heavier than it's actually really purposely needed for this. So back here we're going to have the brake light and turn signal, this kind of oval thing here. And they also have the marker light to the side. On the front side of the fender will be a very similar thing, but we don't have to worry about the marker light up there. So I'm going to go and bring us a length of tube into the shop, start chopping it into a few sections here to make the light holder box things, whatever we're going to call those things. I'm going to put a little bit of an angle on the outside, you know, for a little bit of aesthetics. And uh, that's really about it. We've got some holes to drill for all of these uh, marker things. And then we'll also need some plates that will cap both sides of the tube. One side of the tube will be capped with a piece that will allow these to be bolted on and also have a hole to allow the wiring to pass through. On the outside, we're gonna need another cap that's gonna hold the round marker light and that'll go inside of that tube. I'm going for bolted on with these again, just because uh, future proofing and things like that. It's just easier to bolt these things on and if I want to change something in the future, or if these get damaged, which the likelihood of things sticking off the side of the trailer being damaged is high, it's easier to fix them or replace them should I ever need to do that. Plus, that means I get to tap more holes. And you know I like tapping holes. <laughs> So here's the setup of what we ended up with. We've got a little pocket here in the front for the oval uh, turn signal and brake light. Into the angled end, we'll be able to put this uh, marker light and now get put inside of here. That way the actual tube will protect the light a little bit and that'll look pretty good. This guy, which looks like an outlet cover, <laughs> will just get welded flush onto here and allow us to be bolted onto the side. Now on this side, the driver's side, this little mount has an additional thing going on. Along the bottom here, I've tapped two holes, which will allow me to mount a license plate bracket as well as two holes up here. For some little lights like this, this one happens to be amber, uh, it's the wrong color for this, but that'll illuminate the license plate. That is gonna put my license plate down in this area here, so it has a greater tendency of being damaged, but because the plate needs to be illuminated by an actual light, uh, putting it down here just makes sense as far as wiring goes and it's ease of that. 
I'm not super worried about it because I do have the light bar along the back, which sticks down past the frame as well. So in theory, that should bottom out and hit whatever I'm backing up into before the plate. Also in theory, because it is bolted on, if I need to have some more clearance there, for whatever reason, I can always unbolt the plate temporarily while I'm doing some kind of loading and then bolt it back on as I head down the road again. That's uh, <laughs> with the thought of having the actual forethought to do that, which is pretty rarely the case. But again, nice thing here is that it's bolted on. If that plate gets damaged, I can always make a new mount for that license plate again. So a little bit of future proofing for the repairs I'll have to do maybe possibly in the future. So at this point, it should be pretty easy just to go through and get these things welded out and uh, bolted on to the side of the trailer. I think, uh, I think that will do. So before we wrap up this video, I wanna take care of a couple of little details here. First, I'm going to drill the holes in the front of the trailer for the front marker lights. These will also serve as access points for pulling the wiring for the other lights through the frame. So I'll grab my two and a quarter inch hole saw and drill those holes. Now, one last little detail. I want to uh, take care of removing the rotisserie mount from the rear of the trailer. I think what I'll do is drill some holes through both the mount and the trailer frame. That way if I ever wanted to remount the rotisserie mount to the trailer, I can bolt that on. So I'll pop a few holes through both of those, get the angle grinder going, get the thing cut off, clean it up, and that should do it for this one. Ugh. <laughs> so I think it's gonna do it for that one. We've got fenders, we have lights, or at least we have light prep all the way. And next time we'll get into making the actual log loading arch, which is what I'm really excited about. We're gonna make one of those guys back there, but bigger for this one. So thank you again to Refrigerware for sponsoring this video. Make sure you check out their full line of cold weather gear. I'll have a link to that down in the description. So thank you as always for watching. I greatly appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments about the trailer build, or anything back in the shop, please feel free to leave me a comment. As always, I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. And until next time, <laughs> happy working. <laughs>